we're going to talk about predictive analytics today. Imagine you can ask any predictive question on your own without needing to go to a very hectic, complex modeling process with IT and computers and developers, etc. And this is something that uh, is really possible. In today's market, there are tons of business questions that we're asking every day. Those questions around marketing, about sales, about who will take loan, who will become fraudulent, who will increase their credit card, who will take an activity, what will you do, and even what kind of a crypto coin will be taken tomorrow. Every day in our life, we are involved with so many different digitization. We know that uh, data is king today. And the ability for us to start using this mass data for different purposes is unique. The main problem with answering any one of those predictive questions in multiple different areas is that it requires tons of time. It's complex, it's expensive, and we're depending on very scarce resources. A lot of technology has been developed to really answer those from voice to text and image recognition, uh, video recognition, and many other machine learning and other different capabilities. The problem sustain. Most of those deals with very static problem versus dynamic human behavior. If I got stuck in traffic because of an accident and I'm late for a meeting and I'm anxious, or I heard something on the news, or a political crisis took place that impact me, I will react to this one. I will react because I will buy a ticket to the Bahamas or I'll buy a specific product. It's very hard to create specific models that will predict how will I feel tomorrow, three days ago, or next week, and who knows what will Trump do or what Brexit will result, right? So to answer those kind of problems, um, Professor Pendlet Sandy came up with a concept called social physics that really try and understand how can we look at things differently and can we shift it on its head and really look at things a little bit differently and try to, instead of siloing specific models for different questions, kind of crunch all human behavior data once and then ask unlimited number of predictive questions on your data because the data is going to be increasingly growing over time. So the unique aspect of social physics, beside the ability to create social spheres and understanding how humans behave, find more of the same, find lookalikes in human behavior, and really understand how people behave, not necessarily why, but because we're trying to figure out, can we find more of them? And it's based on the theory itself that really states that in a larger group than 500 people, they will all sustain different individuals. And although we believe we have our own free will, we act um, as many others in the same group. So if you can find one or several, we can find more of those patterns and really mimic them across and find more people. And this goes across multiple different industries, from Homeland Security trying to find you know, ISIS operators or going into selling a specific iPad or specific product tomorrow for merchants in different large corporations. We work with a large organization, banks, etc. really help them find who will take a loan next week, who will use the best credit card, who will commit fraud, who will get insurance tomorrow. The key concept of social physics is that it's ability to run on encrypted data. So there's no need to show information. You don't need to show any PIP, any customer information to understand it. We're trying to understand the connectivity of data points, and really by this, learning how humans behave. When we look at this concept, and we try to take this one into the market and commercialize it across the globe, we're looking at democratizing artificial intelligence and predictive analytics, and really launching a program and application to allow anyone in the globe, not only the Fortune 500, to really access their own data and try to get predictive analytics on their data easily, simple, accurately, really in a click of a button, in friction of the price of the larger corporation, which will use it anyways. What it comes down to is the ability for anyone in the organization on a business capacity to really go out, upload information, get predictive results easily as, as, as easily as possible using uh, three simple steps, by crunching data, by enabling an organization really to work together. And as the concept of this uh, talk today is about what can we see for the future, it's about connecting data, enabling organization to really share data, starting to roll with this one and get some tools to allow everyone access information at the same time and get benefit from this one and not leave this one only for the larger corporation that are taking place globally. Please visit me. Any question that you have, I'll be very happy to answer. And thank you again, Sandy, for uh, everything. Great.